Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. This is Emily from Kid Lit Book Love, also from the Children's Literature Training Academy. And I'm here actually to do an overhead view and a little discussion about um, quality and award-winning picture books, including some a few little tips on selection and criteria that are used for choosing quality picture books. And these are some oldies, as I like to call them here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the books and give you a little peek inside and talk about the art. Um, these books are both incredibly amazing and I'm going to talk about why. And so we're going to look at The Whale Song by um, Diane Sheldon and Swamp Angel by Anne Isaacs, illustrated by Paul Zielinski. So let's first talk about Swamp Angel. So Swamp Angel, despite the odd name, is a Caldecott Honor Book, an ALA Notable Book, a Times Magazine Best Book of the Year, a New York Times Best Illustrated Children's Book of the Year, winner of the Boston Globe Horn Book Award, and a Publisher's Weekly Best Book of the Year. This book is incredible. Um, and it's, it's listed as ages five to nine, which is a little bit old for a picture book, but I'll talk about why and show you. It was originally uh, published in 1994, um, the original version, I believe, was different in this particular book, says copyright 2000, so, um, which is the version that I have. So I don't know if the original publication in 1984 had a different art or I haven't been able to actually get a look at the one of the originals. So, um, but Swamp Angel is a beautiful book primarily because of the artwork and it's known for its American oil paintings. Um, it's considered a tall tale. And it uses the form of art uh, known as surreal, surrealism. So we'll look at that in a minute. But when it comes to um, you, when it comes to selecting picture books, there's three main keys to keep in mind when selecting picture books: value, purpose, and audience. And these are all things I teach more in depth um, in some of my children's literature classes for adults as I'm releasing them in my training academy, but the, I have an entire course that's in development on selecting quality literature for the classroom, for the home, for homeschool. But when it comes to um, uh, also the criteria used for award-winning Caldecott books, there's three main categories with kind of a bullet list under each, a whole checklist of things to look for. And I'm not gonna go over all of those in this video, but the bottom line is the purpose of literature is to make an impact. Through picture books, it's the art that makes the impact. Compared to older children's novels, it's the storyline. So it's often more important in these picture books, the art, than the story itself. So when reviewing a picture book, the first thing you want to pay attention to is the emotional impact it has on you. So I first advise going through the picture book with an open mind, an open heart, and paying attention to how the book makes you feel, what kind of impact it has on you through the pictures, even as you're reading through it. And then you come back and do a few more rounds and look then more closely at the text, evaluating the text, the storyline, and um, getting deeper into the analysis. But we're mostly gonna talk about um, the art in this one, but there's many aspects to screening a picture book, but evaluating the art um, and going through a host of questions is is one of the main ways here so surrealism is basically when realistic images are given an unrealistic or dreamlike quality through an unnatural juxtaposition of objects or people so the art is fantastic i chose this book i got it online and i chose it for the for the pictures <laughs> and now i have to admit when i got to the storyline it bothered me a little bit but this is my personal opinion but the book is beautiful and it's a large picture book, um, shiny and smooth, but this is kind of has a Paul Bunyan theme to it, but it's a, a girl, of course. And I'll talk a little bit about it as we go through it, but the pictures are beautiful. She actually reminds me of like an Anne of Green Gables, <laughs> how the art is done in this. And it, this is Puffin Books, by the way. Um, so, this basically the story, I'm not going to read you the book, but the story is that this baby is born. This is kind of in the, the outback hills of Tennessee. She's born large, 
large and in charge, as I like to say, bigger than her parents. And so it talks about her birth. Um, the newborn was scarcely taller than her mother and couldn't climb a tree without help. And just look at these pictures. They're so beautiful. And see, you know, the, the surrealism, you see realistic things, but the unrealistic um, juxtaposition of the size of her to her parents and things like that. So um, by the time she was full grown, she was second to none in buckskin bravery, performing eye-popping wonders in the bogs and backwoods of Tennessee. So isn't this just beautiful? I mean, I mean, you really need to see this book to, to understand. But by the time she was 12, uh, a wagon train got mired in detection swamp. The settlers had abandoned the covered wagons, blah, blah, blah. She comes in and becomes a hero for all her people because she's a giant and can save them. For some reason, though, as I was going through this, despite the gorgeous pictures, the name, her name of Swamp Angel bothers me. I don't know. For me, it triggered underlying racism. I don't know why. I spent many years uh, living in South Carolina uh, as a military wife back in the in the 1990s. For some reason, this, this just bothers me. And then we lived in the South, uh, some other places as well. But the bottom line story here is that um, a bear starts becoming, um, Thundering Tarnation is his name, and the, a bear becomes a threat to her people, so she gets involved in trying to save them from this bear. Um, so before long, Thundering Tarnation had cleaned out half the root cellars in Tennessee. The settlers were desperate with no food. So she be, she becomes their hero here. They're lining up for land claims. Um, so you see they're in line, and here she is in line too, but she's giant in comparison to the rest of them. This is that that surrealism. Um, oh, and right here it says, um, they're talking about killing, catching and killing the bear. How about baking a bear pie? Blah, blah. And so here we have some other kind of silly, um, un, you know, unrealistic things that happen to the people. So here she is. Um, soon Swamp Angel was the only one left who hadn't met up with Tarnation until one morning she woke to the bear. So here she starts her battle with this bear and she was big. So she was bigger than the bear. And so she throws the bear up into space and he keeps going and going and going. And she thinks she takes care of him. But look at these pictures. They're beautiful. But then, then, you know, the bear comes back down. She battles with him. She lashes him like a tornado. Um, they end up in the bottom of a lake together. Um, so Swamp Angel drinks all the water and dries up the lake and then wrestles with the bear on the bottom of the hill, pretending to make friends with him. See, isn't this beautiful? She opened her, so there's a mention of tobacco. There's a lot of like backwoods southern stereotyping that did bother me about the story um i i would believe that the reason the story won the all these awards was due to the art not the storyline but that's just my opinion um so when i first read through this it was fascinating to see to read it to look at the pictures in conjunction with the um you know the storyline but the storyline started to not make me feel as good as i was reading it from an adult perspective um, here she's snoozing with the bear. She's tricking him into thinking that they're friends. Time goes on. She kills the bear. Okay, so she she pulls a tree and makes it squash the bear. There's his foot. Bear's dead. She's grieving the bear. So she saves her town or village from the bear. Well, then they celebrate by cooking the bear. That night, Tarnation fed everyone in Tennessee, I can tell you. It was the biggest celebration the state had ever known. There were bear steaks and bear cakes, bear muffins and bear stuff and bear roast and bear toast. To wash it all down, there was bear wine. You could hear waistcoat buttons popping as far away as Kentucky. The leftovers filled all the empty storehouses in Tennessee just before the first snowfall. So I didn't care for this because personally, you know, I'm an animal advocate and I eat a plant-based diet. You know, I don't believe in... Personally, I don't eat animals. And so this bothered me because it would depend on what your values are for having children to read this book about, you know, killing animals to eat them and then celebrating it. So for me, that was a problem. For others, it may not be. It's a personal choice. Um, but I just still think the art is amazing. And this book is just so beautiful. And here you kind of see, like, you know, farmland and Tennesseans, you know, violin, they're cooking, they're log cabins it's you know has that kind of historic feel 
Uh, Swamp Angel decided to keep Thundering Tarnation's pelt, his fur, as a rug. It was too big for Tennessee, so she moved to Montana and spread the bear rug out on the ground in front of her cabin. Nowadays, folks call it the short grass prairie, so that bothered me as well. Let's keep a bear fur as a trophy. Um, now you may think no more was ever seen of Thundering Tarnation, but this is not the case. Back when Angel threw him up to the sky, he crashed into a pile of stars, making a lasting impression. You can still see him there, clear as midnight, his shape from when she first kicked him into the sky. So this is considered an American classic in the making by the School Library Journal. Um, uh, 1995, uh, Caldecott on our book, I guess is when the award happened. So would this book, if it was new, created, illustrated, exactly as it is now in 2020, still have won the award. I don't know. For the art, maybe, um, but because of the the sensitivity of our, our society and culture with certain issues now, um, I don't know. I mean, that's a question that would be interesting to ask a, a class or, or a child. Um, but the bottom line is she single-handedly saves the settlers uh, from the fearsome bear known as Thundering Tarnation, wrestling him from the top of the Great Smoky Mountains to the bottom of a deep lake in the original tall tale of an American frontier. So there is my review of Swamp Angel. Uh, it is a beautiful book. Um, interesting controversy behind it. So this one is completely different. Let's talk about the whale's song. Um, so the whale's song... Let me see, I don't remember which year I know it was the 1990s. Yeah, the whale song was actually 1990, <laughs> same year my son was born. This one's listed for ages four to eight. Publishers Weekly call this one um, haunting and evocative. This one has more of the style of realism art with some aspects of using light and shadow um, to, to bring out the realism with a hint, sort of a hint of mysticism. But um, in this book, the whales are kind of shown to be as peaceful as the moon. And so this book, you know, had a, an emotional impact on me, again, because of the Save the Whales concept, which is kind of the opposite, since we're talking about juxtapositions, of not saving the bear. <laughs> so, um, and again, there are many aspects to screening a picture book, and some of them are your own values. Um, if you're sharing this book with your own children, um and whether or not your values personally should play into what you share with a class of children that are not your own comes down more to um, books that qualify, I would say, for you know Common Core uh, standards. Um, but in the Whale Song, the words of this book cast its own tail, sort of, you know, between the spirit and belief. Um, the pictures promote sort of this, and this is a used copy, but the pictures promote sort of joy and hope fullness in, in life and how we as people connect to other creatures in the world and the gentility of these creatures and it kind of shows that these creatures are not just valuable for how uh, they benefit the human race or, or humans you know for their fat or or their meat or whatever it is we do to whales which I don't really want to know but um but it kind of shows that that whales have their own spirit and so it it has a beautiful storytelling style um and the bottom line in this book plot wise if we're talking about plot wise is that there's a girl named lily sitting on her grandmother's knee telling her a story um a very traditional story with a beautiful style of storytelling once upon a time the ocean was filled with whales they were as big as the hills they were as peaceful as the moon they were the most wondrous creatures you could ever imagine and so the pictures are gorgeous in this book um let's see but you see the sort of and these are done in paintings but you see how it's sort of the realism real proportions and well, this is the girl is really quite beautiful and it kind of has this uh the older generation wise one telling a story uh, teaching value of all the creatures on the planet to the young girl um, Lily climbed onto her grandmother's lap. I used to sit at the end of a pier, said grandmother, and listen for whales. Sometimes I'd sit there all day and all night, then suddenly I'd see them coming toward me from miles away. They moved through the water as if they were dancing. And so I talked a little bit about, you know, looking for the whales, watching for them, the conversation that they have. Um, what would the whales give you, grandmother? What did you get from the whales? Lily's grandmother sighed. Once or twice I heard them sing. So here we're showing that 
what we should get from the whales is their beauty of them being unique creatures, not what we can get for value by taking their life is kind of the underlying message. Um, here we have the great uncle who comes and tries to ruin the beautiful message being passed down from the grandmother to the dog, the granddaughter saying, forget it. Whales are important for their meat, for their bones, for their blubber. If you have to tell Lily about whales, tell them something useful. So he tries to crush the message behind the beauty of appreciating the creatures as creatures with their own spirit and, and purpose and liveliness on this planet that are not for humans to take. Um, so then the story continues. There were whales here millions of years ago before there were ships or cities or cave dwellers, said the grandmother. People used to say they were magical. People used to eat them and boil them down for oil. You know, and then it kind of talks about the downside of humankind, what they've done to the whales. Um, then Lily starts daydreaming about the whales. So we kind of see a mixture here too of, of her dream where she's dreaming about them and hearing them sing, singing voices like the wind. They leapt from the water and called her name. Um, Lily goes down and waits for sightings of the whales. She So in this book, you know, at first look through, you think I, the feeling, the impact it had on me is is the beautiful message, the, the pictures, the free spirit of the whales, a, a child trying try, try to understand and learn the value of um, animal life, which I thought was a beautiful message. And I love the art as well, how it was done. Um, but it was really a, a journey of discovery and for the girl and understanding um, how to appreciate, a story of appreciation. Um, so she's sitting here waiting for the whales, having her own thoughts. She goes to the window, she looks out, she thinks she sees the whales passing by. I love this picture, kind of like Ariel Little Mermaid sitting on the cliff, observing whales in their natural environment. She raced outside and down to the shore. Her heart was pounding as she reached the sea. Very enormous in the ocean were the whales. They leapt and jumped and spun across the moon. Their singing filled the night. Lily saw her yellow flower dancing on the spray. So she had given a yellow flower to one of the whales um, previously. Look at how beautiful this is. So beautiful, these paintings. Um, it shows like the, the innocence, the raw innocence of a child, you know, learning and coming into compassion and is my feeling of this book. Suddenly Lily felt the breeze rustle, her nightgown and the cold nip at her toes. She shivered and rubbed her eyes and it seemed the ocean was still again and the night dark and silent and this kind of goes on. But that's the end of it. But the message is, um, well, let's finish. Lily thought she must have been dreaming. She stood up and turned toward home. Then from far, far, far away, in the breath of the wind, she heard the whale call Lily, Lily. The whales were calling her name. So, you know, once again, when when choosing picture books, um, this is why I think it's so important for parents, teachers, educators, tutors, reading aides to choose screen and choose books from their own evaluations prior, instead of letting their kids go into a bookstore and grab whatever books they look at or, or like the covers of. It's really the, the message inside the book and how the art, the story that the art tells of its own and the story that the words tell and the lesson or the message that the book um, speaks. And so that's all I'm gonna get into that today when it comes to choosing picture books. But here are two beautiful books, again, Swamp Angel and The Whale Song, two opposites. One book is about, you know, a tall tale hero, you know, ending an animal's life for her, for food. And the other is about preserving an animal's life instead of using it for food or greed or whatever, it, however it's perceived. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. And um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for new notifications and check out our Facebook page, follow and like Children's Literature Training Academy.